hello everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is osara may and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how i went about the drafting of the pattern for the making of this beautiful dress that i'm putting on right now as you see in this video it was probably inspired by the two pictures you see on this side so if you're interested in learning how i went about this you definitely want to subscribe to the channel so that when i upload the sewing part you do not miss it so guys i'm going to be making mine in white like you guys have seen and it's going to be very hard for you guys to see the pattern drafting on the fabric so i'm going to draft it on my pattern paper i have my paper folded into two and i'm going to start by drawing out a starting line at the top of this pattern paper this starting line is also referred as the shoulder line from the shoulder line you are going to measure down to your bust point shoulder to bust point for me is 10 inches and I'm going to draw a straight line across this point. And secondly, I'm going to mark from my shoulder down to my waist. And shoulder to waist for me is 15 and a half inches. I'm going to also make a mark and draw a line across. So now we have our shoulder line here. This is our bust line and then this is the waist line. So the next thing I want to do is to draw out my other body measurement. And from the center, I'm going to go in here by 3 inches for my neck width. And I'm going to be going down by one and a half inch for my neck depth because this is not the neckline we are going to use. So um, I'm just going to do one and a half inch here for the front neckline. So I'll join the both points that I marked together to give me the round neckline here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is from the center again, I'm going to go in by half of my shoulder measurement. Half of my shoulder measurement is seven and I'm marking it here. Now, from this half of my shoulder measurement point, I'm going to come down by one inch for our shoulder slope. And then from this one inch point I came down by, I'm going to connect to the top of my neckline. Next, I'm going to determine my armhole depth. And to get that, you're going to divide your round bust measurement by six and add 1.5 to what you get. So for me, when I divide that, I got seven inches. So from the shoulder slope, I marked seven inches and I'm going to draw this line across as well. And this new line becomes our chest line. Next, I'm going to connect a straight line from the shoulder slope here to meet the chest line um, so that I'll be able to draw out my armhole curve. Next, I'm going to get the midpoint from the shoulder slope down to the armhole curve, which is just right here. So get the midpoint that's dividing the line into two equal halves. And from that point, go in by half of an inch. Now on the chest line, Go ahead and divide your round bust circumference or your round bust measurement by four and make a mark here so now you will need to join this point this one and this one together to give you your armhole curve now for this next part that i went ahead to do i went in from the center of my pattern by half of my nipple to nipple measurement for my dart but i realized that um looking closely at the dress i was trying to recreate we do not need a dart on the upper bodies of this dress only if you are making use of a fabric that doesn't stretch at all that's when you will need um a, a, a dart so i marked a dart here but at the end of the day i did not make use of the dart because i realized that i was not supposed to put a dart on this but i just marked it anyways so for those of you who are using the fabric that will need you to place a dart just go ahead and draw out your darts like you see me doing like this so I went out on both sides on the waistline by half an inch to connect this dart. So now back to the bust line, my bust measurement divided by four, I marked it. Now on the waistline, like I said, I am not going to be taking note of the dart. I'm not going to be using the dart, okay? So I just marked my normal waist measurement and that is it. Normally, I would have measured the dart and added it back. But for this front pattern, I'm not going to be using a dart. Drawing out the dart in the first place was a mistake, so I did not add the dart allowances back. So on the waist, I just marked my actual waist measurement and that was it. So I'm going to connect all the last points to give me my side. So I connected from the armhole to the bust line and then from the bust line now to the waist. And I'm going to just draw a straight line across this part of the waist so I know exactly where my upper body is topping. So now on the chest line, I'm going to make my line more visible. This is where I'm going to be able to open up my pattern to give me that cowl effect on the front pattern. So go ahead and draw a line on the chest line. Once you're through with this, go ahead and cut out the whole front pattern. So guys, this is it for the front pattern. 
Now I'm going to cut through this chest line. Make sure you are seeing exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to cut through this chest line. Don't cut it entirely open so that um, it doesn't separate into two. Just cut it like I did to just be able to open up for you to get the cow effect in front. Okay guys, for the back pattern, I have already drawn out some of the lines. So I have drawn out the zipper allowance line here at the center. From here to here was one and a half inch and I drew a line across here. Then I have my starting line, my bust line, and then I have my waistline. So now I'm going to add my body measurements. Okay, so all the measurements I'll be taking now will be starting from this zipper allowance line. So from the zipper allowance line here, I came in by three inches for my neck width for the back and came down by one inch for my neck depth at the back. So I'm going to connect these two points together now to give me a round neckline for the back. Next thing I'm going to do is from this line again, I'm going to measure half of my shoulder measurements, just like I did on the front pattern. I'll mark it here. And then I'm going to come down from this point by one inch for my shoulder slope, and I'll connect it into the neckline. Next, I'm going to go ahead and draw out my armhole, just exactly like I did, on the front pattern so from the shoulder slope i measured down to my armhole depth which was seven inches and i'm going to draw a straight line across this point just like i did on the front for those of you that did not get it when we did it on the front pattern so now from the shoulder slope i'm going to draw a straight line to meet the chest line after which i'm going to get the midpoint of this line so i'll measure from the shoulder slope to the chest line get the middle and from that middle point go in by half of an inch and then back to the chest line, I'm going to measure my bust measurement divided by four. Please notice where I'm taking all my measurements from. They are all taken from the zipper allowance line because this is the back pattern. So once you've marked that, you're going to join all three points together now to give you your armhole, just like I did on my front pattern. If you do not have a curve, you can totally use your free hand for this. Next, we are going to be drawing out the dart for the back pattern. I'm going to be showing you guys how to go about this. So you want to pay attention to this so from the zipper allowance line go in by half of your nipple to nipple measurement and mark it both on the chest line and on the waistline so just use a straight ruler to connect these two points together now on the waistline i'm going to go out on both sides of this line by half of an inch and i'm going to connect it to the top to give me my dart i'll be doing this on the both sides now on the bust line i'm going to measure my bust measurement divided by four note that i'm taking this measurement from the zipper allowance line and on the waistline as well my waist measurement divided by four i marked it here but because i'm going to be taking note of the dart i had to replace the dart which was one inch now i'm going to join all the points together to give me the shape for the side now from the armhole to the bust line i'm going to connect like this and then from the bust line to the waist i'm going to connect okay next i'm going to extend the back neckline into the zipper allowance area here okay and then on the waist line i'm going to come in from the zipper allowance by half of an inch this is to prevent the um dress from bulging at the back when we fix our zipper later so from this half of an inch point i connected a slant to meet the top of the neckline just like you see i've done here so i'm going to go ahead now and cut out this back pattern So guys, to get the stylish opening we have at the center back, from the center of my back neckline, I came down by one and a half inch. And I'm going to go in from this center point by two inches. You can go in by three inches depending on your size and depending on how open you want the opening on the back of your dress to be. So from this zipper allowance line here, I came in by two inches for my opening at the back, okay? And I'm going to use a straight ruler to mark from this point into the zipper allowance can you see what i've done here okay so now the next thing you want to measure the depth of the opening that you want to have now this is also going to depend on how open you want it to be and how much of your back you are willing to expose so for me i'm going to be doing about seven or seven and a half inches here this will also depend on how tall you are so i marked seven and a half inches you can mark eight you can mark mark nine depending on what you want to do now from this point, you're going to go in by about four to five inches or six inches, depending on how open you want it to be at the bottom part. I marked four inches before, but I felt like it was not going to be given a very fine shape and decided to mark four and a half inches instead. 
So now I'm extending my line. Note that I'm taking all my measurements from the zipper allowance line. But when I draw out the line, I extend it into the zipper allowance. Please take note of that. So now I'm going to go up from this bottom line here by about one and a half inch to give us a curve at the end of this dress. It's not going to be straight connection, okay? So from this one and a half inch I came up by, I'm going to connect to meet the first line I drew. Just look at what I'm doing here, okay? So now the next thing I'm do going to do is to try to curve this area a little bit. Don't just draw it straight down. Don't let it be straight. You notice that it has a kind of curve that actually gives it a kind of nice shape. So I'm trying to arrange my curve in a way that it's actually kind of circular in this area rather than just pointed straight okay so i connected it and this is what i have so make sure you're not connecting a straight line just try to curve it a little bit like i have done here so yeah that's all for the drafting out of the opening at the center back i'm going to go ahead now and cut it out next thing i'm going to do is to cut off this remaining dart here so that i don't have to start stitching it when i have cut out on my fabric already if i cut it off now it still stays that i've taken my dart so it's still the same thing so instead of having to stitch it on the fabric you can just cut it off and tape it back like i'm doing here and now you can just cut on your fabric directly without having to stitch down the dart you can notice that the dress we are trying to recreate there was no dart showing anywhere so definitely this was how they did it by taking off the dart on the pattern paper so now this is the back and the front pattern fully cut out now I'm going to reduce the allowance I have at the upper neckline here because it's not needed. We're only going to be fixing a hook and eye there. We don't need one and a half inch of stitching allowance. So these are the two front and back pieces. This is how to go about the pattern drafting. Now for the skirt part, I have my pattern here and I have drawn a straight line across already for the zipper allowance. I'm about to draft out the back pattern. So from this zipper allowance line at the top of the pattern paper, I'll go in by my waist measurement divided by 4. Now from the top of the pattern paper again, I'll measure my waist to hip measurement. And I'm going to mark it from this zipper allowance line here towards the side. So from your waist down to your hip. So from the center here, I'll measure my hip measurement divided by 4 and mark it here. And then at the end here, I'm just going to use what I marked on the hip line, reduce it by half an inch. I mark it on this hem here. So on the hip, I marked 9 inches, my which is my hip measurement divided by 4. But at the end of the pattern paper, I marked 8.5 inches, which is my hip measurement minus half an inch. Okay. So now I'm connecting all the side points together to give me the skirt shape. And that's basically how to go about draft, drafting out the skirt part. So from the top here, I'm going to go in by quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to just slant it from the side so that there is no bulginess going on around the waist area of the of the dress when we actually join them together. It's just very small, just like quarter of an inch. So this is basically how to go about drawing out the skirt pattern. If you notice, I did not place any um any dart on this skirt. There is no dart on the skirt as well. So you want to make sure that you use the fabric that is actually stretchy so that this will fit your body perfectly. Because if you look at it, you will notice that there are no darts anywhere. So if I fold this zipper allowance in, I have my front pattern. And if I open up the zipper allowance, I have my back pattern. So this is it. If I join the upper bodies with the bottom, which is the skirt part, this is what I have. Currently, the skirt part is not as long as I want it to be when I'm done making this dress. I'm going to be extending the length of the skirt when I'm cutting out on my actual fabric. We are going to be stopping here for today's video because it's already getting very long and I have a lot of issues uploading long videos these days. It will take literally hours and might not be able to even upload it today if it's longer than this. So I want to be able to upload this video. So I'm going to share it into two parts. In the next tutorial, we're going to be joining all of the pieces we drafted in this video together and I'm going to be showing you step by step how to sew each of the pieces. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one.